think she's out in the desert. I think that she could have been abducted or taken because we do live by a highway and it happens and I'm being real. There's a lot of misconstrued stories, a lot of people saying abducted, a lot of people are very upset about that. Nothing is for sure unless we know it's for sure. Okay, so let's not put the word abducted out there. Let's keep it to she's missing. <laughs> Snapchat, she opened, I'm like, it was the FBI. Um, and everything that they've seen on the investigative side, yes, the FBI still has devices. They cannot get into one of her devices still because it's an Apple. They have subpoenaed Snapchat, and nothing has been turned over from that as of this moment. And I guess Snapchat doesn't have to give up any information. They don't have to turn over anything. It's a bylaw. Real quick, sorry to everybody if you have messaged me. I know I don't need to say I'm sorry, but uh, we all just got our devices back. I haven't had mine since I think three o'clock, so my f everything's blown up. And the FBI is still working on all the devices and all of the background involved with those. So I wanted to let you guys know that um, the sheriff did update to me today that they're still investigating. The devices are still being gone through. Um, she left in her jeans um, and a t-shirt. So... Did she take off her clothes and leave them in the floor? Did she wake up and put those back on? Because right now, we, we can't even tell people what to look for if she's wandering around because we don't know. Well, as far as we know, it's tennis shoes, vans, a, a dark pair of sweatpants, and a white t-shirt. That's what we know. And that was confirmed by I three, three I different three. people. Two neighbors and then... Okay, now I'm, I'm just hearing that for the first time. Tell me about that. What did the three neighbors say? Um, okay, so when we first went out searching in the morning, we searched for two hours, and one neighbor that lived on our street, he's older, and I asked him, I said, did you see my daughter walking down the street, you know, a young girl? And he said, yeah, actually I did. And I said, do you know what time? And he said, it was about 6.30. And I was like, okay. And then <laughs> as this, just the searching and everything keeps going on, we have had three more people to our neighbors who live right in this community that saw her wearing a white T-shirt, gray sweatpants, and tennis shoes, walking west on our high, on our road. This witness told you she was walking what direction from the house Walking and south down from our house Curly's bio mom Lindsay who saw her in front of the house allegedly no nobody well, where nobody did we saw my daughter um, where did we get that story? there was a man supposedly sitting in his hot tub at 6 30 a.m. and he he claims he saw a young girl walking by with a piece of paper and I said that, a piece of paper, what would that have been, Melissa? You know, a suicide note, worst case scenario. I'm trying to wrap my head around this, too. And she said, no, she was in a counseling um, group at her school, and she was really adamant about getting her counseling paper back. I said, 
on the Saturday morning. The first witness says that he saw her at 6.30, walking down our street. Okay, at 6.30, okay, and he described her as being, um, having a piece of paper? Having a piece of paper. Looking up at the sky, but being really skinny, I mean, he described yeah, her. Yeah, he described her, yeah. yeah. Um, long hair, long skinny. hair, she had a white t-shirt, gray sweatpants, and she was holding a piece of paper. And then in a later interview, he told um, the journalist that she was actually looking up at the stars, which he never told me. Disoriented, she didn't take anything with her. The people that saw her said she only had white t-shirt and gray pants, and that was it. She didn't have a water bottle. I don't, I don't know what she's got. And if she Facebook Live, you said that she was wearing jeans. I think. Yeah. I only said that because she always wears her skinny jeans, so I just assumed that she had her skinny jeans on. The night before were light blue. Light blue. Are those missing, the ones she wore the night before? Are they in the dirty clothes? Where are they? I'm trying to figure out what was she wearing when she disappeared. I don't know. Because the two confirmed neighbors said that she had the white shirt and gray sweatpants. Okay, are the gray sweatpants missing? I, I don't know. <laughs> okay. Uh, she, she has so many clues, I can't even... Then that Facebook live that she blasted out saying, look for her in the skinny jeans, what what are we supposed to do with that? That Yeah. That's not right. I, I Well, yeah, I was in a panic, and she's not one of the go out of the house in sweatpants or anything but her skinny jeans. Okay. All right. Are any of her shoes missing? Yeah. Okay. Let me ask the obvious next question. What so, shoes? No. Yeah, her, 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 there's several pairs of her shoes missing now. Like, oh, the investigators and everything. Like, she always wears bands and her one pair of bands was missing when they went into the closet. So that's why I believe that she was in her van. Were those missing that morning? Yeah. That she was scared. She didn't know what was wrong. And that's when she said that she did smoke marijuana. And I said, by the way, you're acting, you know, it's not. And it took about 15 minutes to get her calmed down, but she just wanted to go home. Okay, and you described her as disoriented. Right. Was she disoriented when you saw her? Yes. And describe disoriented from Dad's point of view. Uh, just uh, definitely not stoned on marijuana. <laughs> I could tell that right away. She was paranoid. Uh, she was, like, scared. Scared of Felt scared of us. But then she would almost turn. She would turn to... I love you. It'd be like, you're scaring me. And then all of a sudden it'd be, I love you guys. I mean, it was just... It so was clearly weird. irrational. Very. It was like a roller coaster with her. And then that's when we said, well, maybe it was laced with something. But we don't know. Because nobody's saying anything. And everybody says that it was just marijuana. Your theory is that whatever she smoked was laced with something else? Had some other chemical substance in it? I feel that it was laced with something Lace else or because, or because of the way she was acting. Game or something. Her pupils were very dilated. Charlie was acting paranoid. A um, little. Whoa, 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 What do you mean by that? Why was she acting paranoid? She had to admit it to Zachary. Marijuana. Yeah, she had added. Whoa, 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 whoa. I want to go to Zachary. What was okay, she doing to, to seem paranoid to you? She had admitted to smoking marijuana, and that's the reason why Melissa went to go pick her up early. What was she doing that was acting paranoid to you? Scared. I know, but what did uh, you observe about her that seemed she was paranoid? She... I just, she just uh, was acting very nervous and scared about, you know, uh, her phone, about about us being around her at moments, and then at other moments she changed and just just uh, you know say she loves us and ask us if, if 
said she was acting nervous and afraid to be around you. What was she doing to make you think that? I don't know. She was, she smoked pot. I don't know what was wrong with her. I know, but you're telling me that she told you or told your wife she had had marijuana. All right. Yep. You're saying she's acting paranoid. What was she doing? Was she pacing the floor? Was she biting her fingernails? Was she twitching? Was she crying? Was she anxious? Was she on her phone? Did she call 911? What was she doing to make you tell me that she was acting paranoid? Because I've never seen my children act paranoid. I don't know what that even looks like for a child. What was she doing? She was uh, just standing in a corner, afraid afraid of, of not being safe. Did that, she say that? Yeah, she felt felt like she wasn't safe. Oh, okay, well now now I'm hearing something after right. many questions. She said she was afraid. What was she afraid of? I really wish I knew. So when she said, Dad, I'm afraid, you didn't say, well, why are you afraid? What are you afraid of? I don't know. Melissa, what do you recall? What was she saying? I'm trying to figure this out so I can figure out what may have happened to her. What was she afraid of? Because to me, the fact that she's telling you guys she's afraid and then she goes missing can't be separated. That's important, Melissa. What was she saying she was afraid of? She kept saying, I don't know. I said, what are you afraid of? You're home. We're safe. <laughs> and she said, <laughs> I don't know. And I was like, and then she was just very up and down with being paranoid. And then the next minute she was like, fine. Now, when she called you to be picked up, she was not in a calm state of mind at that point, right? No, she was scared when she called me and she didn't want me to hang up the phone. Okay. And what was she scared of in your best estimation? Because she didn't say, I'm scared of A, B, or C. No. She was just kind of paranoid, right? She was paranoid and scared. And when we asked her, what are you scared of? She said, I don't know. And you said when we asked her, were you there when the call came in? I was there. Um, I didn't know what was going on. All she told me was, I got to go get Carly. Okay. And, I mean, at the time, I thought she was at the football game. So I was kind of wondering why. What happened and what the timeline is. Tell me what your recollection is, Zachary, of the night Carly, your little girl, goes missing. The night or the morning of? Well, what you recall. I assume you went to bed. Right, right. Well, I got home uh, just after work. Um, I had a drink, drink a couple beers. What did she say that made you know she was afraid? Because she said she was afraid. She had... What, what did she say? When I first got in the driveway and the phone rang and I talked to her, she didn't want to hang up the... She didn't want me to hang up the phone. Did she go to sleep ever or was she awake the whole night? I tried to get her to sleep and she like laid next to me and we like held hands and looked at each other and I just watched her and her eyelids were shut but it was like the her eyes were still moving underneath her eyelids. Uh -huh. Like she couldn't try to rest and then that's when I thought that maybe it is methamphetamines mixed with marijuana because methamphetamines make you stay up so you you think that she probably had some kind of speed that, that something. she was racing something that was keeping her up for sure yeah yeah okay. yeah so I drove to town and picked her up she was by herself and uh, when she got in the car I said what's going on where have you been I've been with friends. I got high. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Please don't be mad at me. I'm sorry. And I'm like, smoke marijuana? Like, okay. She was very paranoid. She was scared. And she hadn't smoked weed in a month. And being a mother, I wasn't going to take her to the hospital. She's high on marijuana. Why would I... I just, it didn't cross my mind. She was fine. We talked the whole way home. I brought her home. We spent the 
I was in her bed and she was just gone. And I immediately got up and I looked around the house and I'm just going, where is she? Did she, where, I just don't know. Where the hell is she? And I go and I told Zach and I say, Carly's not in her bed. And so just started to panic. It about her state of mind, her condition, it caused you to instantly panic instead of thinking she's in the kitchen or she's just in the living room or something like that. I looked over and I'm like, Carly? And I started to panic instantly because she didn't answer and she had stayed next to me. Healers and then, you know, two hour point, two hours was the point where something's wrong. And then. Okay, so where is the video now? Have police seen the video? No. Why? Did they not want to see it? Did you, did you say boys? Police, police. Oh, police. Yeah, I believe they have it because oh, yeah. our phone took all been flashed. I mean, did you show it to them? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Good, good, good. Um, let me ask you this. Was the door locked when you guys went to sleep that night? No. We don't lock our house. Was there I any? With Carly in her bed. Yeah. Did Did you guys have a dog? Is there any any way you would be alerted if there was an intruder? Yeah, we have a dog. She would have started barking. Ugh. And nothing like that happened. No. Okay. Did I you was guys in her bed, laying with her. Okay. Now. The whole night. Did, did they Do they have a burglar alarm on the home? No small community so I'm sure there's no reason for it. Alright, so was the door unlocked? Was the door unlocked or open? Did they find the door open? Uh, slightly cracked they said. Interesting. Um, was there any sign of a forced entry? Nothing that I saw. Okay, I'm going Hi guys, thanks for joining me today for the part two of the Goose Day case study. Truth uh, in the lies and lots of inconsistencies. Now this is a crazy story. We all know that this is a crazy story. So much has been covered already by those on the media, social media, the experts, etc. in the field. Well, we'd hope there's a lot covered by the experts in the field. Um, but there's also been, as we know, a lot that have been um, that is uncovered. So there's so much more to uncover in this whole thing. And it is a story, you know, whole thing is a saga. It's just crazy how this is all unraveled. Now, I only came across this post only about a month ago. Um, I'm in Australia, so it's not as prominent here in Australia, but I, I saw it on a YouTube um, video. I saw another YouTuber posting about it and I was drawn to it and I thought, what's this about? And yeah, like everybody else, I started having suspicions about the storyline and jumped on Facebook group and that's where I'm at right now is um, realizing that, well, I'm not the only one, obviously. There's a lot of other people that also feel the same and have suspicions. And there are a lot of weird things that are found in these F um, Facebook lives, in these interviews. You know, it's all very bizarre. Now, in her first Facebook live at 4.30 p.m., now I'm, I'm going to be talking about what I've actually posted in my video just now. The Facebook Live that she posted at 4.30 p.m. where she's frantic saying, I think she's being, being abducted or taken. You know, wow. And then there's no appeal to the abductor. It's, you know, we've said this before. An hour and a half later, she writes her post to Sean Hannity stating that Carly went for a walk and never returned. Now, this is on the same damn day. It's not even yet been 12 hours and she's posting this to him. And it's so final, never returned, sounds so final. Then the other thing that stood out to me was she said, um, I'm writing to inform you of some news that my daughter, Carly Goose, went for a walk and never returned. I'm thinking some news, it's not like gossip. You know, it's not like she's just talking about what she had for breakfast yesterday and some event that happened at, that, you know, at her breakfast table or something. Like she's talking about a significant event. Her daughter went missing. It's significant. Why would you say, I'm just informing you of some news? Like that stood out to me. And she even states in this post, 
Um, you know, that she even states in the post that she went missing from 6.30 that morning. And yet, how did we know about that? Because she also said it in her first FB Live. But she's never said it from that time forward again. And we'd never known at that stage where that 6.30 came from until later on in like maybe, I don't know, I think it was October 17th that she finally came forward about, in inverted commas, witness number one, who said to her he saw her um, someone that looked like Carly at 6.30 a.m. So this is where she's got this 6.30 a.m. timeline. So just bizarre. And then she says that um, her and Zach are talking to Nancy Grace about vans, tennis shoots. She's saying the witnesses, three confirmed witnesses, saw Carly in vans, tennis shoes, right, and grey sweatpants and a white T-shirt. How the hell could the three witnesses, even one of those witnesses, unless they're bloody awesome and they've got great eyesight or something, how would they know what brand she's wearing? How would they know their vans? How would they know their tennis shoes from a far distance away? I mean, she doesn't even say in her first Facebook Live what colour jeans that Carly was supposedly wearing. She didn't say what colour t-shirt that she was supposed to be wearing or what logo might have been on there or what brand any of these were. She never even mentioned anything about what footwear Carly might have been wearing. So we only find out through Nancy Grace on the 26th, 27th interview, right, of October. In the interview, she's then telling um, Nancy about how the witnesses saw Carly in tennis shoes, vans, and a t-shirt. And she even mentions the elderly or the older man quite a few times. Now, I'm not putting down old, you know, <laughs> older people, but how the hell can an older person really understand or see that far away, if he's in a hot tub especially, that she's, oh, she's wearing Vans shoes. She's wearing tennis shoes. How the hell would he know? So the only, then she goes and, like, I figured it out because in the same interview, Further on, when Nancy's asking about the missing jeans and the missing sweatpants, saying, you know, were they missing? And she, and then Melissa says, oh, I don't know, I don't know. She's got so many, I don't know, I don't know. And I don't know because the witnesses said she was, that she was wearing grey sweatpants and a T-shirt, like a white T-shirt. What's that got to do with it? Do you know if they're missing or not? That You should know. If you're the one doing the washing in the house or if Carly's, in sweatpants she's obviously not in her jeans so what the hell so they're either with her or they're in the house where else could they be so that's another thing that got to me is that she goes on about oh she's got so many clothes like 50 t-shirts and so many jeans and so many sweatshirts uh sweatpants i should say well if she's got so many sweatpants why do you say in the next breath that she's only ever worn skinny jeans you know if if she's got so many of them, you'd notice, wouldn't you? You would notice. Now, the thing too is the Vans shoes that she's, she said that um, there were several tennis shoes or several shoes missing on the day, right, that the investigators apparently took several shoes. And she noticed that a particular pair of shoes were missing. She says they're Vans tennis shoes. So this is where she's realised, before she's even spoken to any bloody witnesses, She's noticed that the Vans tennis shoes are missing. Why the hell did she not come forward in her Facebook Live and say she's wearing tennis shoes or Vans because they're missing? Why wouldn't you say that? I just don't get this shit. Well, I do get this. I do get it. But, you know, anyone who didn't understand it would be like, what the F? You know, this does not make sense. And this is why Nancy was so full on about this, like really pushing for the answers, I feel, because... They were so evasive anyway. Um, but the silly thing about this is when you tell the truth, you never have to remember anything. But when you lie, you don't know what the hell you've just said. You don't remember. And this is the thing with, um, I find it hilarious in a way, you know, that Melissa is saying that the witnesses confirmed tennis shoes. How would they freaking know? And then she's telling us that she already knew on that morning or that day that tennis shoes were missing. So she already knew that. Okay, so then the next thing I noticed was um, the piece of paper that the witness supposedly saw 
you know, the girl holding, who he thought was Carly. Lindsay's telling Nancy Grace that the witness came forward, telling Melissa that uh, the girl was, wearing, uh, was holding a piece of paper. And Lindsay has said to Melissa, well, what's this piece of paper, Melissa? Is it a suicidal note? What is it? Um, is it a, sui a suicide note, I mean? Um, and Melissa said, well, no, actually, she's part of a counselling group at school and she was adamant about getting her paper in. And Lindsay's turned around to her and said, what, on a Saturday morning? You know, and so it just doesn't, doesn't add up. That, but, you know, Nancy Grace, Melissa didn't mention anything about a piece of paper in the witness's hands with to Nancy Grace. She never mentioned it in the Dr. Phil one either until Dr. Phil mentioned it. So Dr. Phil mentions it, and that's when she just talks about it. But she quickly talks about other things that he was looking up. He said the girl was looking up to the stars or something. She doesn't really want to focus too much on that for some reason. So October um, 22nd, though, in her life, she says that, you know, she goes on about how she didn't take anything. People didn't see Carly take anything from the house. Um, she didn't have anything in her hand. She didn't have a water bottle. And then she goes, I don't know what she's got. But I'm thinking, well, actually, you do. Because you've told Lindsay that the first witness, the older guy down your street, told you that Carly was holding a piece of paper. Isn't that significant? Wouldn't you be getting on your Facebook Live saying, please look for a girl who might be holding a piece of paper? Yeah. I mean, <sighs> far out. I'm getting angry about this. You can hear me getting passionate. I just get angry. I get so angry because it's so obvious. I can't understand how people just can't see through this. Like the people that are uh, defending this, you know, I just don't get it. Now, the other thing that really got to me, right, is in the Dr. Phil and even the um, Nancy Grace interviews, but especially in the Dr. Phil one, they both describe um, Melissa's behaviour, uh, sorry, Carly's behaviours. Now, they were both very evasive, as we know, and very closed off in the Nancy Grace one. She had to kind of like really, um, it was almost like pulling teeth just to get this answers out of them, you know. it's just It was just really bizarre. And I'm thinking to myself, well, you know, that was only like a week or two later after Carly disappeared that you had that interview. So why wouldn't it be fresh in your mind what her behaviours were like? And, you know, you'd think it'd be more fresh in your mind what actually occurred and you'd be having a lot more descriptive detail to tell. But no, in Dr. Phil's, they're, they're still holding back, but I found Zach to be more talkative and able to express and describe Carly's mannerisms um, quite well because, I mean, he's had six months also to work it out, hasn't he? So... You know, they've said that she's paranoid, she's scared, she's irrational. There were suspicions of her weed being laced with meth. Um, her, eyes under, her eyes under her eyelids were fluttering or moving fast. She, it was a roller coaster ride, Melissa explained. And, we, and then Melissa gets defensive in one of the interviews and goes, we don't know, we don't know what it was. Well, I'm thinking, well, go and get it tested. Go and take it to the ER, get it tested, find out what the hell it was. You already are admitting to both Nancy and Dr. Phil and to the rest of the world that you suspected that there was more than just weed in her system. You have told the whole world that you believe that there was something that was causing these irrational behaviours and causing her to be nervous and scared and her eyes to be fluttering and staying up late at night, you know, and being absolutely terrified of things. So, and asking to call 911, whether she called, whether she asked you to call 911 or said, would you call 911, she's mentioned fucking 911. Take the girl to the ER. This is what gets me pissed off. So, they're very evasive, right? About all this stuff. And in Zach's um, interview to Nancy, he sounds really evasive. It almost at one point, I was sitting there listening to it and I'm kind of envisioning in my head when he's saying things like, you know, she was paranoid. Like Nancy's saying to him, what was she doing? What was she doing? And at one point he goes, I don't know. She smoked pot. I don't know what was wrong with her. That's not answering the question. She wants to know what Carly was doing. What was her body language? What was she saying and what was she doing? It's such a simple question. 
And he's and I felt he was being coached by Melissa on what to say. He either was not there that night, okay, and doesn't know what the hell Carly was doing because he wasn't there, or he might have been drunk out of his brain and not remember. But the thing is, that's how it sounded because it felt like she had to fill in the gaps for him. And it may have been being a phone interview that she was mouthing silently to him what Nancy needed to hear. So, you know, things like, where was it? I've written it down here. Um, I can't even remember where I've written it now, but it's like saying things like, I can't remember, like she was very, she was very nervous and paranoid. You know, just so slow the way he was saying it. It was almost like he was being told by someone, like he's looking at their, their, I don't know, her mouth or her hand gestures to see what she's saying. I don't know. Just That's just how it seemed to me. So, yeah, it's just so weird. Um, so is it an inconsistent story on how they've described things um, or is it, was it just the way they've described things in this next part I'm about to say? Because is it really an inconsistent story or is it just how they've described things with less detail? Because it comes across as odd. Now, what happens is Melissa says to Dr. Phil, we got the call. Okay, so she's talking about when Carly calls her. She goes, we got the call. Dr. Phil says to her, what do you mean? Were you there too, Zach? What do you mean, we? Were you there too, Zach? And Zach says, I was there. Um, and, you know, that he was there and that he was um, surprised or something, something along those lines because he thought she was at the football game. And so Melissa, on another part, says that she drove into the driveway, then gets the call from Carly. And I'm thinking, well, you're in the driveway, you're in your car alone, where's Zach, you know? He's not there when you've got the call, unless you went inside, I'm not sure. But it's just very strange how they're describing this. And then with Nancy Grace, backtrack, he says, because um, she's asking him to recall the events of that night of his timeline. And he says, okay, um, well, I got home from work. I had a couple of beers and then Melissa and Carly showed up. He doesn't say anything about, I was at home and Melissa got a call from Carly and she was really panicky and I had to, and she had to go and get her. Like he doesn't say that to Nancy. So it sounds like a completely inconsistent story, doesn't it? Um, so you've got all of these um, interviews, right? Not all of these, but the interviews with Dr. Phil and Nancy Grace and it does seem like a, a hell of a lot. Like the whole time they're basically talking about how paranoid she was. They're living it up, right? They're, they're not living it up. What's the word I'm trying to say? I'm tired. Sorry, guys. I'm trying to work out what I'm trying to say. Like they're emphasizing how much she was on these drugs and how it is affecting her so badly. They're saying, they're even saying they believed she was on meth or something that was causing her to act this way. But in October 22nd on uh, Melissa's Facebook Live, she actually plays it right down. And you'll see it on the video if you want to replay it there that I've put on here. She says she wasn't going to take Carly to um, hospital. She was high on marijuana. Why would she? But yet she, she understands and she recognizes and acknowledges that it wasn't just marijuana. So what the hell, Melissa? What the hell? So then on October 22nd in one of her Facebook lives, she starts, she states that um, on the morning that she found Carly gone, she was looking around and she's woken up and thought, well, where is she? She goes and looks around the house and, and then goes into Zach, I think, and she then starts to panic. And then she says something about, um, going off and searching and then two hours then she realizes something's wrong no shit I mean you start to panic in the house when she's not there but you wait till two hours later to realize something's wrong give me a break so then dr. Phil fast forward to his interview last in, Mar in last March she goes I looked around and I instantly panicked while she's in the bed she's saying she's instantly panicked and because he said, why, you know, why didn't you think to look in the kitchen, etc. But in her October 22nd live, she's telling people that she's already gone and looked around and then she's starting, starting to panic. 
Okay, she's starting to panic. Um, but Dr. Phil, she goes, I instantly panicked. Like, it's just, it's not consistent. So Nancy asks Melissa about showing police the audio, right? This is just a, another example of how she's caught out in her lie. She's asked by Nancy, have you shown the police the video? I know Nancy meant the audio, but this is what she said. And Melissa says, oh, I believe they have it because phones have been flashed. Our phones have been flashed. Um, so then Nancy says, no, but have you showed them? And then Melissa pauses for a bit and then says yes, which is a lie. Because if she showed them, she would have just said outright yes to begin with. Okay, so the last thing I noticed about this particular um, one, and I know I've touched on this in the last part one video, was around the door being unlocked, okay, their door. Because Lindsay has mentioned to Nancy, once Nancy's asked Lindsay, do they have the security system, do, you know, what's it like? And Lindsay says no, she says they mentioned the door being slightly cracked. Now, being an Australian, I thought that meant, um, you know, a literal crack <laughs> in the door. I didn't actually know that it meant open. But this is the thing. So Lindsay mentions that the door has been slightly cracked. Now, Nancy knows this the next day when she's interviewing Melissa and Zach. She has that in the back of her mind. And so when she's asking Melissa, do you lock your door? There's a bit of a pause, isn't there? And then Melissa says, no, we don't lock our door. And then she says, I was in the bed with Carly all night. Like, that's relevant. I don't know. But anyway... Um, and so then Nancy questions again and says, well, do you have a, dr a dog that would alert to an intruder? And to me, Melissa seemed quite uncomfortable talking about the door. She seems really closed off even more so, doesn't want to talk about the door. She seems to disassociate herself from the door, doesn't want to associate herself at all to do with that door because every time the door's mentioned she'll say no but then she'll go and talk about herself being in bed with Carly all night and at one point in there if you listen um, Nancy asks her um, did something like that happen or asks about the door and you hear Melissa go like this under her breath it's almost like she's quite uncomfortable about having to talk about the door now I find that very interesting because, um, as a lot of you know, I do psychic sessions. Um, I have connected with the Carly Guse case, and they have informed me, or through the spirit, you know, sessions that I've done, they have mentioned the door multiple times. So I'm putting two and two together and, and thinking, wow, is there a connection here? Spirit are mentioning this door all the time. And I'm about to put up a spirit session that I had with Carly. And she mentions the door again. So to me, personally, this is really interesting when I'm hearing her in Nancy's interview becoming really uncomfortable about any talk of this door. Because, yes, she's answering the questions, but she immediately goes back and says, I was in bed with Carly all night like it wasn't me. <laughs> you know, it's like, well, no one's accusing you of anything, but... If you've got that in your mind, maybe you're guilty of something. That's just my take on it. So I just found that really interesting how she makes that sound under her, you know, um, breath or whatever she's doing there. It's kind of like a uh, like an uncomfortable sound. Um, people tend to cough a lot, or you know, um, like that sound I heard her make. It just it sort of stands out to me that you know they're trying to that they, they are uncomfortable or they're trying to. Um, stall so they don't have to answer the question but I just felt that she was very uncomfortable talking about the door so go back and listen to that and tell me what you think and I'd really love to hear what you think about all the other things as well um, even if you disagree I'm open to hearing what your thoughts are and if there's anything I've missed feel free to comment below as well and I look forward to connecting with you all next time love and blessings to you